So joining us on this first catch-up call, two Albion legends, neither who really need any introduction. Um, we've got joining us from Spain, Inigo Calderon, Calde, uh, as he's affectionately known, and uh, in Paderborn in Germany, Uwe Hunemeyer. So uh, kicking off with you, Calde, um, obviously a lot of Albion fans will have read last week the the piece that you, you did with the local paper here. What's um, How's the situation there and, and how are you and the family? Well, uh, we are right. To be fair, we are right. I think we've been through this now. Um, and I, like I, I lost the count already that we've been locked down. And we try to do it really, really good in my house at, le at least because it's the only thing we can do. We try to respect the rules they, they made. We try to just go out for like buying food like once a week, something like that. Uh, but we've been all right because uh, I used when, when the season is, is going, I cannot, I cannot spend that much time with my, with my kids and my family. So I try to spend as now is 24 seven all the time with them. It's a bit busy. You have to organize everything. You have to do like a, like a planning for every day with kids, especially, but it's all right. It's all right. We are safe. We are healthy. So it's more than enough at the moment. And that balcony that you're on there, you, you were saying to us before we, we started recording that that's been a godsend. Yeah, it's been something that no one used here in Victoria too much because obviously the weather is not now today is sunny, but usually it's not it's not that good. But we like uh, we discover everyone discovered the, the small balconies because we live in flats here, so this 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 area is the only one you can breathe uh, fresh air. So as as soon as there is some sun outside, we just go out and stay here for fast. It's just five meters square, square, but we stay here all the time because it's like uh, the only way you can you can. I don't know, feel outside. And, and are you staying in touch with all the people at the club and, uh, you know, your squad of players? Is, is yeah. that, that something you're doing on a daily basis? Yeah, we try to organise. Uh, we send them some, some work to do, but obviously, like I say, we live in flats, so it's not that easy for them to, to, to keep them fit. It's been already three weeks. They have some planning. After that, we, oh, I try to send them some videos about... I try to do some uh, easy to watch, you know, like a Champions League games, Premier League games, La Liga games, so they can analyze. We see the similarities we have in in our, in our game, so it's just try to keep them fit and to, uh, and trying to keep them as well fit mentally, you know, like uh, they cannot switch off um, football wise because we don't know what's going on. To be fair, it's a bit of like, like uncertain about if we are gonna play anymore because we we are playing in the third tier here. And they say that probably here, the first and second division is going to be the only one that they finish because it's a lot of money involved. So it's a bit everything in the air because the, we, depending, every, every week they, they change and they say, OK, we're going to stay locked down one more week. So it's not easy to, to plan anything, but we try to keep them, like I say, in contact first and after fit and mentally and physically. And Uwe, obviously for, for you out in Germany, it's, you, you're, you're, you're in lockdown as well out there now. And... Uh, how, how how are you and the family? You you coping well? Well, we are already as a team pretty much in a lockdown since uh, more than fourteen days because we had a positive test. Um, I think it's more than two weeks ago on a Friday. So our team had a game that night, uh, Friday night against Dusseldorf. Um, I already stayed home because I was actually ill that week, um, but no symptoms uh, like close to the virus. So. They tested me as well, but uh, fortunately my test was negative. But a day later, someone got tested positive. So we all, or the whole team got tested on a, on a Saturday, straight after the game, which uh, got postponed uh, actually on that day because we had that positive test. So um, from then, uh, I think 14 players or 15 players uh, had, to still, had to stay at home for 14 days in quarantine. Um, fortunately, I, I still was allowed to go out for running and doing like the daily stuff like going to the supermarket or but actually all the shops are now closed since last Sunday so they tightened the rules again you're just allowed to to go out with your family to for a walk or go to the supermarket uh, and otherwise uh, the whole life is really yeah stopped to yeah just going to the supermarket buying some drinks or that's all you can do right now. Uh, but apart from that, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm healthy. My family is healthy. And uh, fortunately, we, we've got a big garden so the kids can go out. The weather was nice the last 
couple of days so we're we, we're fine so um but we're when a really difficult situation in general but so all we can do is just follow the follow the rules doing our our stuff um to stop the virus as quick as we can but nobody knows when this virus is um yeah being stopped by everyone but we have to take care of every everybody so um that's the main focus right now and um yeah that's all we can do right now and what you're doing in terms of staying busy and active indoors obviously you're able to to go out and and, and train and do a bit of exercise but how how are you uh, coping passing the hours indoors yeah we've got a training program already for two weeks now and we're finishing in our uh, second week now at home um you can you can choose between running outside if you're allowed to and uh, or doing a bike session inside the guys who weren't allowed to go out um they um were delivered a bike from the club so they had to do their stuff um, at home in their flat and the other guys they they could choose between running or or, or uh, using the bike and uh, We've got a lot of videos uh, sent by the by the fitness coach, and uh, which is pretty intense. Um, but I really enjoyed doing di- different stuff at home. I tried to do to make the most of it, um, staying in good shape. But um, of course, um, you're missing the ball. That's that's the main thing. Playing football. Sometimes I'm playing with my boy in the garden, but most of the time I'm the goalkeeper, so <laughs> that's not the same. <laughs> but um, yeah i mean i'm i'm already 34 years old so i'm not losing too much in in terms of playing football but i try to to stay busy staying fit and that's all you can do right now so uh one of the seasons we wanted to touch on obviously was the 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 season where your albion careers overlapped um the near miss the season that that was almost the one where the club got promoted to Premier League, but missed out on that final day. And uh, we'll take it back to the summer before that that season started, and that's when when you signed Uve. So, uh, what do you recall about first hearing from uh, from the Albion and their their interest in in bringing you over from Germany? Well, when I look back, um, it was it was quite surprisingly that uh, they get in touch with me because I already said to Paderborn, I'm going down with them playing second Bundesliga. And all of a sudden there was some interest of, of Brighton. And um, to be fair, I didn't know a lot about that club. Um, but uh, as, as soon as they were in touch with me, they, they sent me a video about the club and I was really impressed by the facilities over there. I mean, I haven't seen anything like that before. Um, the great uh, training facilities, the stadium. So um, I think my family came over first to to visit Brighton and uh, to see how it is over there because I was still playing here um, and I had to train. And so the the club invited my family to see how Brighton is and uh, about the training facilities over there. So um, and as soon as they came back, they they knew when they tell me how it is over there, I'm, I'm going to say I have to do that because it's, it's, it was so impressive for me and my family. So, um, um, yeah, when I came over, it was like three days before that Fulham game. I still remember I came over on a, on a Wednesday. Uh, Thursday was my first training and on Saturday I played my first game um, away to Fulham at Craven, Craven Cottage. Um, yeah, it went so quick that time. I mean, I had no chance to, to settle in really. Um, Fortunately, I had some boys who really took care of me, like like Bruno and Kyle, because they, it was really important for me to have some guys like they were for, foreign players as well, and um, makes makes it easier for players coming who who came abroad from abroad. So uh, they really helped me to to settle in, and um, yeah, it was was really interesting time i mean busy time that time but uh, i really enjoyed that that move to brighton and i'm always looking back with with a lot of um yeah good feelings and calde one player that also came that summer was uh bobby zamora what did what did you guys make of his return because obviously the fans knew all about him he had a a real stand in at the club but what did you guys make of uh bobby making that that return to the to the club that summer uh, I, th- I think uh, with Bobby was something so special. I mean, 
I remember he was on the bench and, and as soon as he came on some games, you can, you can feel the, or you can smell, even smell the, the fear they have the, the position team, you know, and that, that after he scored every time. I remember I think it was Leeds. I, I remember a lot of games he came off from the bench and everything with the crowd, all the, all the, I mean, I think everyone has so much good impression of him that he create a good atmosphere. So it's like he changed everything. And as soon as he came on to the, to the, to the pitch when he was not even from the start, it was like, a, something's going to happen. Uh, after they always he scored. It was, I mean, his numbers, they were so, so good for a, for a player with his age and, and all the, the games he already played before, you know. So it was really, really impressive and, and it was a, a privilege to, to train with him and to live with him. And one big aspect of that season, obviously, uh, uh, was the, the Shoreham Air disaster. Obviously, that impacted that season, but that, that seemed to bring the club, club together, really, in a, in a massive way. Hello. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think uh, like we are having this problem as well here with the, all this virus. All these problems, when that happens, I think they always say oh, oh, it kills you or makes you stronger. And when that happened, it was something like uh, it was really, really bad. I mean, in the, in all, on the area in, in, in Sussex, it was like a, so, so feeling so everyone feeling so bad when you, I, I mean, we travel every day to the training ground and from the training ground. And every time you pass from there, it was like a, you, could, you could not forget what are happening here in, in there and like I say it make us much stronger and I think was the, the the step we need maybe not for the season because we couldn't do it but it was a step really 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 important for the next one to go promoted. And Uwe what was your what was your recollection of that as a as a newcomer to the area as a newcomer to the club? Yeah, I still remember it because uh, it, w it was on a match day. Um, I think uh, we just came to the dressing room when, when we had our pre-match and uh, then, we, then we heard the first news of that crash and um, I think already some of the players had that on their phone or got sent some videos. And, uh, but we, we couldn't imagine what, what, what was the outcome of that crash really. You know, we, we, had, a, we had a match... Um, it was just it just happened and uh, we tried to focus on our game and um, you just realize it after game and and the days after and um, what what actually happened that day it, it was a massive disaster so um yeah it was it was just a big tra tragic so um yeah i mean when when you see what happened in in, in afterwards uh, what happened uh, before that next home game um, you could see that what 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 made made this club special that time. You know, um, everybody stood together. Um, we were a big unity that time, and maybe that was was one of the aspects which made us stronger that time. So, um, but it was it was just crazy that time. So, um, but um, yeah, that that were my impressions of, of that crash. Yeah. And the, and at that point you were in the middle of a twenty one game unbeaten run as a as a as a squad. Um, that that was pretty phenomenal, really a, a fantastic start to that season. What was the what was the secret behind that? Well, I think to be fair, I think Brighton was uh, everything like a little steps every season. I was the six and a half. So I could I could. Feel it, you know. Even from from the first time, the first time I arrived, we were fighting for the relegation in the in League One, and everything was so like a step forward, step forward, not not bigger steps. But I remember, I always remember the day we we went out of the playoffs. I think it was the second time, and I think it was like I don't know, was the the Palace year or the next one? I don't know. I remember. I think it was Derby County as well. And, and the next day, I went to the we went to the training ground, we went to the offices, and. Everyone was working like a normal day, you know, like, uh, okay, we are in the process. We are, we are progressing. It's, it's, it's a matter of time. We are in a good way. And that's it. And for me, trust me, I, I, that impressed me so much because coming from Spain, the next day you go there, it's like a, a big funeral. I mean, you, you, people don't work. Maybe there's a fight. No, here it was, okay, we are in the process. We are happy what we are doing. We believe in what we're doing. And that's it. We, no one changed anything so dramatically. So yes, was more step, one more step, one more step until 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 we won it. And and then obviously that that run in the the Middlesbrough game was obviously the key game that everybody everybody remembers. But 
Uwe and, and Calde, what were, what were both of your memories of that, starting with you, Uwe? Well, obviously, I was uh, injured that time. Um, I was still coming back from my injury. And um, that day, I traveled with Solly, uh, taking a, a train up to Middlesbrough. And uh, I think we started in Brighton. It was like, let's say, 15, 20 degrees. Solly was in shorts. And we came up to Middlesbrough. And we came out of the train. And it was like 8 degrees, foggy. <laughs> gray dark and all of a sudden he, he was freezing because he he, he wasn't dressed uh, uh, perfectly for that day but uh, I mean it was a totally uh, different place like coming from Brighton traveling up to Middlesbrough so we followed the game uh, in, in the stands with the fans um, which was a, actually a really nice feeling standing in between all the fans and I think Connor Goldson's father was there and and his missus so some some um, yeah people we, we knew already so um, I mean in the end it was just I mean everybody was just sad uh, following that match uh, we were really unfortunate with that red card of Dale uh, we just turned that game around we, we scored the equalizer and and then you have to see how the, the opponent uh, get promoted I mean you, you, you cannot experience anything like that you're missing the promotion and the other team get promotion so um, it was just crazy that day. I mean, everybody was devastated that time. So, um, but we had to carry on. I mean, uh, we still had to play the playoffs, uh, but it was mentally tough, definitely. I mean, everybody tried to do his best. And then if you look back to the playoffs, w what happened to, to our teams with the injuries? And I mean, it, it shouldn't happen that time. But I mean probably it made us even stronger for the following season. And, and Calde, just obviously your, your thoughts on that, but also going into that game against Sheffield Wednesday, the, the two-legged affair, um, that must have been really tough to, to, for the squad to raise themselves and, and, and go into that game. Yeah, that's the thing. I think we say perfectly. I think we, we knew that we deserved the, the promotion, the, 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 the automatically promotion against Middlesbrough. Uh, and after, like you say, you, you are prepared so much for, for the final games that when you don't get it, it's complicated to, to, to stand up again. And uh, after, after then, I remember really good that game against Sheffield. Everything was against us. So many injuries players. I remember when we made the, all the, the, three, the three substitutions, uh, Anthony Nocard twist his ankle. I tried to go inside with him and try to, I was with Watto and I saw, you have to go out, my friend. We don't have more change. We have to go out. It's, it's like a, it was like a real war, you know, but he couldn't. And it was like a, with, with tears in his eyes because he knew that he couldn't go out and we didn't have more change. So it was like a, everything is going against us uh, in, in the worst moment of the season, you know, because I, I don't know how many points we have uh, different with them, but I think it was like around 15 or more points different with them, you know, so it was, everything was, let's say, unfair, you know, because I always think that the table doesn't lie and and, and, the, and then the end of the season after 46 games, you, you deserve where, where you are, but in the playoff is different. Uh, we have three playoffs I play in there. I play three, three playoffs in Spain with really big teams, good teams, and playoff is different to, to the rest, you know, that's why there's a, it's a, a part of mine that hates the players because I don't think they are that fair. In the league, you are the best, you, you go up. You, you go up. In, in the playoff, it's a matter of key moments. And sometimes the lack that I don't like to, 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 to I know, to put confidence on it. But in the playoffs, you, you need some, some, of it, some of it. Now, of course, that, that was the near miss. But you both enjoyed promotion during your time here. Calde, that was 2010-11. Um, the last year at with Dean um, before moving into to the Amex, that was almost a, a faultless season. Uh, you, you, I think the game that stands out for, or the two games perhaps that stand out for all Albion fans were those matches at Charlton and Peterborough. Um, and I see you smiling there. What, what, do, you, what do you remember of those? Because they were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I th that, that season for me was the best season I played in my career. For sure, and I think a lot of players we have the best season of, of our careers. You know, you remember Cardi Dicker, Graham Murray, Chris Good. We have Elliot Bennett, Liam Bridgard. I mean, all the players we 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 play a great football. Probably I told you, my, my for sure was the best of my career, and I think a lot of players the same. And we enjoy so much in, in the in the in, on the pitch. And for, for me, that's the key. And like you say, that two games was like a 
the switch, no? Like, okay, we are here. It's not just like a, like a, a contender. No, no, we are here because we, we, we believe we are the best and, and we are showing every, every single game and we did. I mean, we were champions uh, against teams that have more, much more uh, budget like, like, uh, than us, like Southampton, for example. So it was a fantastic season. Everything was like planned, you know, because everybody was expecting to us to play in the at the Amex in the in championship. But it was not that easy, you know. When you when you in, in theory you don't have the best players, it's a matter of a team. And like I said, I think it was a a, a great year uh, playing. Even now, if I go to to Brighton, I, I go with the train and I pass through the, to the Wiggins, all memories there are really, really, really good. And it was not the best stadium, you know, not the, not the best, it's not the theater, but everything from, from that season is, is coming with, with good feeling for me. I guess the one game that stands out from that season is, is the Dagenham game at the Wood Dean. Yeah. Um, the night you clinched it, that yeah. balmy 4-3, seven-goal thriller. Um, one minute we were up, one minute we weren't. It was, yeah. what a night that was. Yeah, for me, probably was the the game with less control because for me, that season, we controlled every single game of the season, a part of this one. I think it was so, everything quite chaotic, you know. Probably we, we knew that we are going to go out, but we wanted to do it that game. I was so nervous, so much excitement in the in the atmosphere. And that was good as well because if you win easy, it's not the same. That game was a completely thriller. I remember scoring the goal from the corner. I remember, I think, Brickat scoring a, a screamer as well that game. It was so, everything so, so good, like a, the perfect, you know, like uh, the, the last page of, the, of, the, of that season was really, really good. And then clinched the title away at Warsaw. What a, what a day that was. And the, those celebrations live long in the memory as well for everyone. Yeah, I still remember, we you know, with the cap and going out, uh, all, the, all the players with the stand full of, of, of Breton fans in there. Well, like everything, like I told you, it was like a, you, you make a script of the season, you do everything like that, you know, you, you, you cleanse the, the promotion at home, after you go out, you win away, you are the champion, everything was perfect, perfect for, for the next season I was uh, starting at the Army, so everything was, like I say, a script, a perfect script. And, and what were the celebrations like over that, that summer, and, and obviously you had the 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 the, Amer- the the Amex opening that summer as well to look forward to. What that must have been uh, a great close season for you. Yeah, the thing is, I'm gonna tell you one thing. Now we have been three three weeks here. You you use the time to I don't know to clean things things and organize things. So I, I found a video camera, old camera, and I tried to to take all the all the data was in, inside and was like a celebration. I have the video from from the inside the dressing room. After going out, after in the in the marina, in the in, how do you say the the parade when you we did the yeah yeah in the city center yeah yes and everything was in there so it was coming a lot of good memories from 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 that but I remember being in the in one disco at night and with Bati told me Bati and Chino you know remember the Argentinian players telling me that I was not that happy I like a, I should be like a jumping and jumping but for me it was like a, everything was inside like a, okay when you got something that you you think you deserve it's just enjoyment i don't need to to get drunk i don't need to to jump but it was okay okay we we got we got what we deserve and and obviously since since that promotion and and we talked about the near miss and there were other near misses how did it feel finally seeing the club get that promotion to the to the premier league um i I guess you'd have loved to have been part of it but equally knowing you you would have been as as proud as any Brighton supporter and as pleased as any Brighton supporter. Yeah, at the beginning, the first thought was like, wow, I'm not there. I feel so jealous. And jealous not, sometimes is not good. And I was feeling bad even for that because we, so I was like, a, I wanted to be there, you know, I wanted to, to, to feel part of that. But after when you feel more like a calm, you, you, you realize that you've done something as well for, for that. And, and a lot of people make me feel like that. Even I remember going to the game, I think it was against Wigan. And I was watching it on the on the stadium, and even Bruno tried to make me feel part of the of the thing going going out in the in the stands. So at the beginning was a bit feeling like, oh, wow, I want to be there. But after you realize that everyone, not just me, Gordon, and all the players, all the Spanish contention, all the players we we were there before, we we make a small part. And like I said before, Brighton has been like a project. It's been like a every season a, a step forward. And we did the one we did more years, we did more steps, and that's it. But that's it. It's, it's a matter of uh, trying to help the team even on and off the pitch and, and obviously since you left Brighton you've, you've 
done a fair bit of globe trotting, starting in in Cyprus, then on to India, uh, and now back in Spain. But uh, tell us about your time in Cyprus and and, and how that was. Wow, uh, Cyprus is is a, a nice country to live. With family it was, I mean, amazing. We were living in like in a complex, like a holiday complex nearly, and because the weather so good and all the players, Spanish players, we were there, even from different teams. But we have kids in the same ages, from more some uh, more or less, and we were all the time together with all the time in the streets. So it was really really good experience, life in experience, family experience that they deserve. Uh, but to be fair, football wise was a bit of of a nightmare because they are. Uh, I don't know how to say. They have the war things of the of the of the Greek fans and the and the Turkish fans. You know, they are so much. If the thing is going good, it's it's a, it's a dream. But if something is not going good, it's a it's a nightmare. And I remember we have to stay twice in the dressing room uh, locked because the fan all our fans they wanted to to go inside. You know, so we were like two hours after the game trying to to make them go home, and, and they after after they tried to 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 throw us oranges, stones, everything. My family couldn't go to the games because they were like throwing uh, flares. So it was, I, I don't know, it's, it was a mix of, of feelings. I, I, I don't regret myself going there. It was a good experience. But like you say, on the pitch was, I even even in position, in the position we, we lost, I think with two games and they want to sack already the manager, you know. So it's a different country. It's a difficult country to play, but a good experience overall. And, and India, you you were champion, so uh, huge success, and and you you obviously cross paths with a, another ex Brighton man in John Gregory. Yes, that that season was for me was like like a relief, you know, because we won the, the championship in in a playoff system. They played there in a playoff system to 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 see who is the, the champion, and, and I won the we won the the the, the final. And for me, it was like a relief. I say okay. Now I can retire because it's not like uh, I am the one that always losing semi-finals and finals, you know. So it was kind of a relief. And to be fair, being there six months just thinking of football because we were in the hotel all the time, just football, football, football was like really uh, enjoyment, you know, and like as well. We deserve that. We, we create a good family. It was a really, really good experience. I mean, the, the country is, is amazing. It's completely different to everything. And that's why that's what I wanted to, I went there. I didn't want to, to feel like, I don't know, countries, Europe countries, like something more or less similar. India is completely different for good and for bad. But it was a good experience. The only problem I was so, so far from my house. It's like a, now 9,000 miles from my house. And it was, was complicated to, to cope with that because my kids, they were, they were quite young at the moment. It was like a five and two. So it was not that, not that easy. And I know, I know you've always had this um, desire and ambition to to go into coaching, and and now you're you're realising that with uh, with uh, Alaves. So how is how is that going? Yeah, I, I, the problem. I wanted to keep playing, to be, and I I was one one more year playing there. But I like I say, the, the distance with the family was too much. So I decided to to have my boots, and like you say, I was all the time thinking in the coaching. So I took the the step. I took my my idea at the beginning at the beginning was to to stay like a few months out of the game just to I don't know spend more time with my family and, and think a bit things better. But they call me here from Alabe, so I have to to take it because they were in a situation that they need my help or they say that at least. And and we took the the team in, in third division and we got promoted promoted to the to second big like like league one in there. And I'm enjoying really, really much. I mean, I miss football. I obviously I, I miss playing playing games, but at the end of the day, it's like I have to think more about the game because I am playing eleven games at the same time. You know, because each player have to try to to think what, what they are thinking, and it's really, really good. I enjoy it so much. I, it's no time even to to miss that much football. And I don't know. I would like to to keep learning. I'm learning a lot. I put in a lot of times. That's a lot of hours. That's true. That. When you are a player, you do this, the half of half of it, and you earn double money than the coaches. But well, I still so so happy with that. One day in the future, could we maybe see you uh, as a future future Brighton and Hove Albion manager? Yeah, I would like to. They know that I know that, and it's a matter of when and how. But for sure, my family they are they are happy with that. We miss that. My 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 daughter she born in in, in Brighton. My son was like a. His five years was there in Brighton, so we have good memory from from Brighton. And at the moment, it's like I was I have to be in my city in Vitoria because, like I say, I have some some let's say problems with family. They need to stay here at home, 
now we are much better. And so now we are ready to, to move if, if something is coming good. So who knows? I don't know when, but for sure it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Uwe, just looking back on your promotion campaign, that was the 2016-17 season. What, what, what do you remember of that absolutely epic season that, that finally saw the club back in the top flight? Well, actually, most of the season was pretty tough for me because I didn't play that much because uh, Dunkey and Shane, they played just an incredible season all the time. They never get injured. Um, I mean, that was a fundament for our defensive stability, these two plus, plus uh, Stocko in goal. And, and so as a, as a manager, you don't want to swap too many players, especially in, in, in the back four. So I had to stay patient for most of the season. Uh, but in the end, um, when when Shane got injured, uh, I think he broke his foot. Um, my time my time came along, and um, I had to step up. As in in that period of the season, uh, when it when it came up to to get promotion uh, over the line, because we 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 played another incredible season, uh, and uh, everybody was just um, not sure if I can can do the same as Shane did the whole season because nobody uh, n- uh, knew how I um, handled my, my injury and I didn't play that much. I just played some games with under 21s or in, in the cup games, but this is different, you know. And then when it it's coming to the big stage, uh, coming to the last 10 games, everybody was just looking at me. Can you do that that job as good as, as Shane? Or And uh, fortunately... We got it over the line. I, I did my bit. Uh, I, I think I played really well through that last uh, 10 games. Um, and it was a big relief for me as well. I mean, um, it, it, was a, it was a bit big uh, pressure for me, um, showing, showing that I was still uh, capable of playing on that level um, and get that job done, um, get it over the line, get that promotion which was everybody looking for. And uh, we came close the season before doing the same same job again. It was just incredible. And um, I was really happy to do to help the team to, to get the job done in the end. And that Wigan game at the Amex, what, what can you recall of that day? I mean, the celebrations afterwards, I think, uh, were, were off the scale, really. <laughs> Yeah, actually, it it wasn't a hundred percent done. I think we, just because of the goal difference, um, we said before the game we can't celebrate like it's promotion. Definitely, when we win that game, but as soon as the final whistle uh, was blown by the referee, the whole pitch was entered by fans. So actually, it was like promotion. We celebrated like promotion, <laughs> and uh, it. it Actually, wasn't a hundred percent sure. We still had to wait for that game. It was uh, was later. I I can't remember who was playing. I think it was Huddersfield, Huddersfield and Derby. Or... Yeah, Huddersfield and Derby. I think. And um, some of the players were just uh, were still following that game, but it was like just mental already. Straight after the game, we were standing on the stands celebrating with the fans. So nobody was doubting that we get promoted. So so it was just crazy feelings, mental and. Um, yeah, I still remember every every part of it, and some crazy celebrations in the, in the city centre that night. I think as well um, with the players jumping on trains, heading into town, all all still in their tracksuits and partying long into the to the small hours of the Sunday morning. Yeah, I was I was quite surprised because we we had to stop the promotion party in Bohemia at one thirty already. They closed it at one thirty, and I thought what the hell is going on here? I mean, it's just, normally it's the start of a party, party night when you, when you, uh, I mean, drinking and partying at one o'clock, one thirty, and they, they closed the door. So we had to carry on somewhere. And I went with uh, Nikki to some kind of a uh, kebab shop at the lane, uh, at the, at the seafront. And all of a sudden the whole uh, kebab shop was full of Brighton fans and we were dancing and celebrating on tables and, it was just crazy, and and Dunkey came in later, and yeah, just great memories. Uh, fans were everywhere, and um, it was just uh, a crazy night. And uh, obviously, you had a season in the Premier League again, l- limited playing time, but you certainly didn't let the club down when you you came in and played the games that you did. Yeah, I mean, it, w- it was quite clear for me where as soon as uh, Shane came back, um, he's gonna he's gonna play, and uh, the same happened. I mean. 
he barely get injured. Uh, Dunkey the same. I mean, they they they've done a great job the season before the promotion season in the Premier League. So I couldn't argue with anyone. So I couldn't blame anyone for the decision to, to keep me on the bench or because we were just a group of four great centre-halves, even with Connor. It was, it was tough for, for us to get playing times, but we had to do our bits in training and um, to keep up the, the training and um, to, to push the boys to, to even better performances. Um, so it's it's not that easy all the time to to keep up your spirit but um i try i tried it as my best and um i think at the end of the season i just played one game in in the premier league but i think the club was still quite happy with me with my training performances and they thought about to give me a contract extension but i i told myself like i don't want to do that again i mean sitting on the bench that, that's not me because i i thought there's still more in me than just sitting on a bench even you're playing in a Premier League and but that's not me uh, that's why I made a decision after that season and I'm, I'm still looking back with um, I mean with with good memories and um, yeah but it was a time for me then to 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 swap again and obviously for those that don't know, you've had an amazing success again with Paderborn. So not only did you help them to the Bundesliga before you joined Brighton, you helped them get back up on the back of a really tough time for them as a club. It's an amazing story. Yeah, and you have to say, I mean, in between when I came to Brighton in three years, they got relegated actually, uh, I mean, in the end two times, but actually they got relegated back to the fourth league they just stayed up in the third league because uh, one uh, one club didn't get the license for the third league that's why Paderborn stayed up and straight after the season after they got uh, promoted from the third to the second league that was a year I came back to Paderborn so uh, I signed really I mean I signed for Paderborn pretty early so they were still playing in the third league and um, I just said to the club I'm just coming back when they get promoted to the second league fortunately they they got promoted and, um, yeah, then, then the season in the second Bundesliga was like, like a fairy tale again. I mean, we were the underdog, so nobody thought they are going to play a season like that. We, we, we had a manager, or oh, he's still our manager right now. He's, he's um, not really experienced. He's, he's like, let's say, 52, but not really experienced in, in, on high level, uh, on, uh, in high levels uh, as a manager. But he's really enthusiastic. He's like standing at the touchline. He's walking, running up and down. He's he's motivating you, and I really enjoyed that. So in the end, we got promoted again. It was it was a big miracle again to get promoted with Paderborn a, a second time. We, we didn't have the financial budget as other teams. It was even a big bigger miracle than than the first time because we we just had players um, from third and fourth league. They were just developing like quickly in that time playing third Bundesliga then second Bundesliga get get promoted and now we're playing with that kind of team in, in, in the first Bundesliga of course we right now we're bottom of the league but I mean to get promoted with Palborn twice it's just it's just crazy again I mean I've experienced three promotion promotions in five years so um Lucky, lucky, uh, lucky enough. I'm, I was, I was part of these teams and different teams, totally different teams, totally different uh, financial budget. I mean, in Brighton, it's it's totally different to the times in Paderborn. But, but I really enjoyed both both times. Really, as long as you have success, um, football is is probably the best uh, job in the world. So finally, guys, and really appreciate your time. It's been fantastic catching up with you both. Um, starting with you, Calde, um, what's your message to, to the Brighton fans? Obviously, hugely popular figure over here, and I'm sure they would have really appreciated you giving the time for this and, and enjoyed hearing from you. Well, nothing. Just uh, I always say thank you to them from my time in there. Uh, like I said before, I would like to, to go back there. I don't know when and how, but I, I think I will. I wanted to go to, to watch some games, but obviously now yeah, we, we cannot do it. Hopefully everything's going to be better for, for, for everyone. And uh, now it's a time to, to, to stay with the families. And as soon as the football comes, I think uh, 
get the feeling or, or, or say, okay, we sometimes we are so, I know, like frustrated or so negative with, 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 with the results or performances. But now when you don't have football, you realize how, how privileged you are when you are just going to the Saturday 3 p.m. to, to watch a, a Brighton game. So try to enjoy as much as you can, the, I mean, the following games. And Uwe, your message to the fans? Well, f first of all, I just want to say there's um, thank you to the Brighton fans. There's still a bond between uh, Paderborn and Brighton fans because um, uh, I was lucky to to invite some Brighton fans over here. I think it happened already two or three times. Uh, they came over to watch some Paderborn, Paderborn games here in, in Germany. So um, I'm really happy they came over and uh, watched some games over here. Um, yeah, I really appreciate the support. Uh, appreciate that support from the Brighton fans. I still got it, and uh, hopefully, I can come over uh, one day again. Um, I just travelled over once uh, during my first winter break. I came over to watch an Everton game, and I really appreciate that support from the fans. And hopefully, we can enjoy uh, football as as soon as we can. Um, but um, first of all, we have to follow the guidelines right now. It's it's in. We're in a difficult period right now. Nobody knows what, what's going to happen in, in the next few days, few weeks, a few months. Nobody knows it. Um, stay at home with your, with your family, with your friends. Um, keep positive. Uh, I think that's, that's really important. Um, support your, 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 your family as, as best you, as you can and uh, make the most of it. And hopefully we, we see us again uh, one day in, in the Amex. Um, I would like to come over as soon as possible, but um, as long as I'm playing football, it's it's not that easy. Um, fortunately, I've got a winter break, so maybe um, next winter break I can come over and to say hello to all the Brian fans. So take care and uh, all the best. Thank you very much to both of you. That's brilliant, and really hope we we see you very soon when when we're able to start thinking and playing for thinking about and playing football again and. Uh, Really appreciate your time. Thanks to everyone for watching as well. We'll be back with a, another catch-up call soon.